Welcome back to a very special end of year edition of Let's Talk Electric by West Bank. I'm your host, Papi Mabele, and today we're putting the finishing touches to a turbulent yet transformative year for new energy vehicles in South Africa. 2025 saw the market double its collective share again, but the real story is which power source drove that growth. Let's dive straight into the numbers compared to 2024. Here we break the market into three core groups. First, the hybrids or HEVs. These are our traditional self-charging models. They are the clear market cornerstone with nearly 3,000 units sold in Q1. That's 2,970 units. They grew by a reliable 14.8% year on year and that growth is largely driven by affordability and a single locally produced champion, the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid. The HEV is still the trusted choice for the South African consumer. Next, we look at the comeback kit, the plug-in hybrids or PHEVs. This is where the story gets exciting. PHEV sales soared by an incredible 70.9%, reaching 241 units. This explosive growth is fueled by new, affordable, long-range models from brands like Jaiku and Cherry. Consumers are finding that PHEV perfectly balances electric commuting with the essential peace of mind of a petrol engine for long distances and critically for load shedding. And finally, the pure battery electric vehicles, or BEVs if you must. And despite all the buzz, BEV momentum stalled in the first quarter with sales dipping by 16.4% to 276 units. This reversal highlights profound consumer caution, high import duties keep prices steep, and concerns over the public charging infrastructure and ESCOM's grid stability are clearly pushing potential buyers into more secure hybrid and plug-in hybrid camps. So the conclusion from the numbers is stark. The PHEV segment is now outselling the pure BEV segment in quarterly sales. And this fundamentally changes the conversation around local NEV adoption and proves that for now, South Africans prefer electrification with an internal combustion safety net. Those numbers tell a clear story, don't they? Now let's look at the cars themselves. 2025 was a year the BEV price barrier finally started to crack, thanks to a few very strategic new entrants. More importantly, 2025 was a record year for choice, with a significant rollout of new models. This year was defined by the arrival of the new wave of electrification, especially from the new and established Chinese brands, and a major push from the German premium segment, starting off with the price disruptors, or the BEVs. Starting off with BYD Dolphin Surf, the new most affordable BEV. And then secondly is the Dayun S5, which is sort of like the entry-level city car and then looking at the Dongfeng box, which is another ultra affordable entrant. And then looking at BEV SUV or crossover wave, it starts with the BYD Dolphin, which is a mid-range urban crossover, and then moves to the BYD Atto 3. This is a popular family electric SUV. And then looking at the Lexus RZ, which is a premium electric SUV, and then the Mini Aceman, which is behind me, which is a compact electric crossover. Then there's also the Volvo EX30 Cross Country, which is a rugged version of the popular EX30. And then there's the Volvo EX90, which is a high-tech premium SUV. Lastly, the PHEV comeback. Starting off with the Jaiku J7 SHS PHEV, which is a mid-size SUV, a top seller at that. And then there's a Cherry Tiggo 7 PHEV, which is a plug-in hybrid version of the popular SUV. Then there's a Cherry Tiggo 9 PHEV, as well as the BYD C-Line 6, an affordable PHEV SUV. Then there's the BYD Shark, which is South Africa's first ever PHEV Bucky. And then the Ford Ranger PHEV. 
PHEV, which is the first locally assembled PHEV bucky, although mainly for export. The key takeaway from this list is diversification. The market is now deep enough to have a PHEV bucky in the BYD shark, while the entry level segment is becoming a true battleground with the BYD Dolphin Surf landing at a headline price of 339,900. Now let's see how they stack up in the table. The biggest news in affordability is without a doubt the BYD Dolphin Surf, landing at around 340,000 Rand. This vehicle has fundamentally reset what affordable means for a new electric car in South Africa, undercutting its nearest competitors by a significant margin. On the flip side, 2025 saw a major statement from the premium sector with new models promising ranges that finally address the Johannesburg to Cape Town road trip. Our next segment is about the backbone of the entire electric future charging infrastructure. Has a rollout kept pace with demand? In short, yes, the investment is pouring in with market reports that indicate that South Africa's EV charging infrastructure grew by an annual rate of over 26% in 2025. Looking at public charge account, we now have over 500 public charging stations across the country, a great sign of maturation. Then looking at provider growth, Grid Cars remains the leader, but Rubicon slash Charge Pocket is becoming a major force, aiming to roll out over 250 new charges by the end of the year, expanding coverage at petrol stations and malls. As for speed and location records, two points stand out. Firstly, the fastest charger race. The market is now focused on ultra-fast charging. While it's still rare, we are starting to see the deployment of 150 kilowatts and even 320 kilowatt units at the key rest stops and major corridors. This is what will get you from 10% to 80% charge in a luxury EV in under 20 minutes. Secondly, the most remote charger. The real game changer for long distance travel and load shedding peace of mind is the emergence of off grid solar powered charging hubs. Companies like Zero Carbon Charge are strategically building these in critical, previously underserved rural areas, like their site in Volmarine Stadt between Johannesburg and Kimberley. This addresses the national grid instability head on and proves that South Africa can leapfrog traditional infrastructure challenges. To close out, we have to highlight the models that really define the year for us here at Let's Talk Electric. Starting off with the best value game changer. This goes to the BYD Dolphin Surf. And that's because it's simple. This car makes a statement that BEVs are no longer just for the wealthy. It's priced where a new small hatch used to be. And that is the key to mass adoption in South Africa. And then looking at the most versatile newcomer. This is the Jayku J7 PHEV. This is the embodiment of pure HEV revival. It's stylish, it has SUV practicality and the perfect blend of a solid electric only commute range with the security of a petrol engine for long holiday trips. It perfectly addresses the local market's need for flexibility. And then looking at the compact powerhouse, which is the Volvo EX30. It's small, incredibly stylish, and packing a powerful punch with competitive range and DC fast charging up to 134 kilowatts. It brought genuine premium design and performance into a much more accessible price bracket, making it a serious contender for the aspirational buyer. With that, 2025 was a year of the hybrid dominance and the PHEV strategic return. For pure BEVs, the focus shifts to 2026. Will the new influx of affordable Chinese models and the continued expansion of the charging network be enough to turn that sales graph around? Only time will tell. But for now, that's it for this special edition of Let's Talk Electric by West Bank. Please make sure that you leave your comments in the comment section down below. And please make sure that you share this episode with your friends and family. But also make sure that you are subscribed to the West Bank channel so that you're the first one to know as soon as we release the latest content. 
from myself, Papi Mabele, your host. Thank you so much for tuning in.